Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and I'm here with Dr. Normal. This week, we are joined by Will Raddick and Bobby Fatboy Roberts. Hi, guys. Hi, how's it going? Hello. So let's... Before we go any further, let's just get the Twitter names out of the way so that everyone can go and rush to you on Twitter. <laughs> All right, sounds good to me. So Will Raddick That's and Will Fatboy Raddick. Roberts. Yeah, no, yes. no spaces, none of that. Just it's all one simple. word. Yeah, yeah. It, you've made it very easy. for We're everyone. trying to make it easy to find. I appreciate that. That's nice. I, I, I wonder about the people actually who put big uh, numbers out after their Twitter, like they don't want anybody to find them or something. Mm. You know? Although Will Raddick mm. has a K, no CK. That's true. I'm just saying, I have maybe tweeted at Will Raddick with a C. <laughs> I've heard that before. A couple times, and then felt like an idiot later. That's not why we're here. We're here to talk about Seventh Planet Picture Show. That's true. What is it? Seventh Planet Picture Show is, uh, okay, well, let me tell you a story. I like it when you tell stories. This is <laughs> it's story time. Everyone sit down, get your milk and cookies. <laughs> a long time ago, before I moved here to the wonderful land of Portland, because I am one of those uh, horrible transplants uh, so from California, no less. So I don't think anyone in Oregon still is actually from Oregon, <laughs> Dr. honestly. Dr. Normal's from Oregon. Oh, okay, all right. I, I, I was born in Portland. But, That's why uh, he hates me. But seriously, I don't think anyone <laughs> I know anymore is actually from Portland or even Salem. So. Dr. Normal's from Portland. Really? Yeah. Well done. Nice. Okay. So anyway, I interrupted your story already. <laughs> That's okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, I live down in a place called San Francisco, <gasps> which you may no, have heard of. No, saying um, so. It's true. It's true. And uh, there were some people there who had a theater called the Darkroom Theater. They did an event every week, and they still do it, called um, Bad Movie Night. Very simple, straightforward, uh, live mystery science theater style commentary. Um... Uh, it's run by Sherilyn Connolly and Jim Forniatis. They are the uh, j like they're kind of like uh, Jim owns the theater with his wife, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. they were totally badass. Like I went down to it, and I was like, "This is gonna be awesome!" And it was. Uh, they let you yell at the screen. They give you free popcorn, although it was like kind of like they just buy the bag and just kind of throw it in there, which goes in the whole thing of. Uh, um, <laughs> The whole kind of mediocrity thing, you know, they just go to the uh, department store, buy this huge bag of popcorn, bring it in. It tastes kind of stale, but it's still fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of like how most of the movies are. And uh, it was fantastic. So when I moved up here, I was very sad because I couldn't go every Sunday and yell at movies with a crowd of people who were my friends and so did they did everyone yell at the movie it was like rocky horror picture show everyone was participating yes and uh with, but without the scripted callbacks it's just like yeah. they put a movie up there and they would have uh a few people in the front with microphones rotating um commentary mm -hmm. like different people every week and then um you know there was a liquor store across the street byob they didn't actually sell anything there and uh you could uh yell at the screen all you wanted and uh, I did quite often. In fact, I might have annoyed them a couple of times. I don't know, but uh, it was pretty much fair game. So uh, I saw quite... A, I think the first movie I went to see there was uh, Invasion USA. <laughs> Chuck Norris uh, fighting uh, Cubans who invade South Florida. And uh, it was fantastic. There's at least two, there are at least two points in the movie where he puts a grenade down somebody's pants. And then just kind of just like, ah. <laughs> gotcha. Once seems fair. Twice seems a little excessive. Yeah. They just, they really milked that one. They yeah. like, they really enjoyed the grenade down the pants thing. So, which is Bat also in a movie called Tango and Cash. It's actually. also in a movie called uh, Batman Returns. Really? Yes. I've See, one it. grenade is Batman. Two grenades is Chuck Norris. That's the internet math <laughs> oh. on this. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. No, um, which Batman was in the Bat, which one? Batman Returns, that was uh, Keaton. Okay. That was Michael Keaton. That was the one with no chin. <laughs> so it was the first one? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't remember. Well, the second one. It. Batman Returns is the second one. Yeah. Keaton did both. But he, he was in the, both. I he remember both the first one. Maybe he I was just blocked out the second Vito, one because right? it, it was bad. bad. I have already Wait. derailed the show into useless arcane movie of trivia. This no, I'm sorry. That's, that's, okay. right. that's what it's all about, though. So, that's sort of how Seventh Planet works, correct? Exactly. Basically, it's just like a bunch of people. It's, here's how I understand it, because we did one. The first time we did something like this was called It's a Terrible Movie, and we showed Masters of the Universe with with Dolph Lundgren and Courtney Cox 
And Courtney um, Cox was in that. Courtney yes. Cox was in it, oh. and she was <laughs> awful. She was terrible, but she wasn't the the most awful thing. Um, there's. If you no. remember the cartoon, there's a, a floating demon-y thing called mm -hmm. Orko. Yeah. I do. And for whatever reason, um, yeah. Orko couldn't be in the movie. They couldn't They couldn't afford to, you know, put a, a, a black sock on somebody's head I and do, then I tie, do. like, a bib around their neck and put a hat on him and shoot him <laughs> in close he, he floated, and he had sparkles, yeah. I think. They, they, couldn't, they couldn't figure that out, so they got uh, Billy Barty to wear um, what looked like a, a variety of cow flops glued to his face, <laughs> and they called him Gwildor. And and so uh, the the third person in our Ew. yeah I'm sorry the third person <laughs> in our in our commentary trio was Eric Hendrickson yes. of Portland Mercury and um, that first time we <laughs> did it uh, he just stopped halfway through the movie because the the visage of Gwildor so angered him <laughs> that if he started to let anything out the the uh, the whole show would just become nothing but a, a torrent of profanities with no jokes involved. I think he's probably still having nightmares because I yeah. invited him to do that and I'm I'm sort of proud of that. <laughs> should be. Yeah. So the idea I guess is basically um, you got Crow T Robot and Tom Servo up front mm -hmm. and then the rest of the crowd is nothing but Statler and Waldorf. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically how Seventh Planet Picture Show is supposed to go. It's a very highbrow way to put it. I'm, I, I, really? And Anytime you involve reference... Statler and Waldorf, it yeah. becomes that, highbrow. That's really highbrow? You know, I'm, not talk, I'm talking about felt animals that you stole they a hand They had the balcony. Oh, yeah. They had the balcony. True, very true. That makes sense. They that makes obviously sense. were wealthy mm -hmm. puppets. Statler and Waldorf were very distinguished gentlemen, okay? Yes. yes. <laughs> they were named after fancy hotels as well, so hello. Well, Statler, Statler Hotel? I think so. I've always thought it was. I yeah. never even caught that. Thank you. I feel like a moron right now. I never caught that. <laughs> One of the biggest Muppet fans I know, and I, it never occurred to me that Statler and Waldorf were na both named after hotels. Mm. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so, anyway, so, Seven Planet Picture Show, and then last month, was it last month? What was last month? I forgot about last, last month. Last month was entirely. September. Okay. <laughs> um, and, I'm very uh, certain. Back to school month, it's very, very hard on people who have to yes. go to school, and me, even though I don't have to go to school, but, you know. It's a difficult month for people. Yes. Uh, so I what happened last month? Did you do a? Did you do one last? Month? I did another one last month. Uh, I had uh, Kyla and uh, lock it to you, Scott. Um, Scott, lock it to you, and uh, that was fun. We did critters. Mm -hmm. uh, I brought a bunch of little um, kind of tribbles? craft things that look like oh. yeah, tiny little multicolored oh, tribbles. Oh, pom poms. And uh, yeah, we we called, called them furbles, but they were like this Ugh. big. Oh, yes, furbles. the furbles. And I threw them around in the whenever the, the you know, there are many in critters. There are many parts in which the little critters kind of turn to balls and sort of bounce around and go like, Ooh, and uh, so I sort of throw the furbles at that point, and uh, everybody seemed to enjoy it. They were still finding them in the theater uh, a couple weeks after the yeah. production, so yeah, Did you I say probably would have vomited probably. Because of what? Because of critters, or because people are throwing furballs all over the room? Because I have an active imagination. Imagination. I might vomited. have been afraid that the <laughs> that the furballs were critters <laughs> landing as long as you on me. Multicolored. And I tend to spots, wear low cut shirts, cool. and so they would probably land. <laughs> that was actually happening shirt. to uh, Megan. Um, yeah. See, that would happen to Megan Kate. Yep, that's what Same happened. Same issue. Mm -hmm. Or she, she kept butter packets. I kept throwing them back there. She's like, oh, God, it got me again. Okay, so you did that. And now like, it's coming again in a few weeks. At the uh, Mount Tabor Theater in the lounge room. The very and, nice little lounge room with the theater there. Oh, the, the Mount Tabor. Yes. Um, What movie are you playing? <laughs> it's a movie from 2003 called Despiser. Despiser. Sounds like a Depeche Mode album, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It really does. It does. And... Uh, it is uh, sort of like a Depeche Mode album if you ask like an angry 13-year-old to describe it to you after he'd been on drugs for uh, a few days. Like he'd been like on an acid trip for like four days. And uh, that's kind of like what the movie looks like. Uh, okay. Why is the 13-year-old on an acid trip? That's what I'd like to know. Was that just... the question you were going to You've never to been next? to my basement, have you? I... <laughs> Uh, so. I think I need to scoot sideways now. <laughs> it's um, okay. We won't fall really should come down and hang out. <laughs> Dr. Normal, uh, move the camera. Yeah. So the 13-year-old boy on the acid trip describing the Depeche Mode album. That's what the spider's kind of like. It's, it's about a, a, an artist who gets fired um, from his job mm -hmm. and then loses his girlfriend the same day. He gets evicted. Because uh, that's what happens. Yeah, uh, inexplicably. When you're an artist and you get fired. He's lucky he had a job, frankly, as an artist. He, well, I'm yeah, that's saying. what I would say. I mean, that's one of the things you got to say about it. I mean, he's really upset with his job. You have to say, you know, how many how many working graphic artists are there really that, that you have to sit there and complain about your job? So, uh, 
But oh, he's a graphic artist. He's a graphic artist, and uh, he right, really hates his job. Begins. He calls his boss a butt plug in the very beginning of the movie. Um, Is that why he I got fired? I don't want to fired? spoil it for you. Yes. Okay. Well, that's part of it. Sorry. Sorry. No, that's okay. I'm spoiling the it's whole really movie. It's really like a two-minute I'm so movie. intrigued. I don't know. It's difficult to spoil this movie. I mean... <laughs> It is really tough. It's it's kind of it's kind of like taking a rotten chicken out of the garbage and leaving it to rot for another week, and it's still you pretty much wouldn't want to eat it either way. I've missed you in these descriptions <laughs> that you have. So the um, seventh planet, it's like the, a rotten well, chicken um, <laughs> that's been left out for an extra week yeah. after it rotted. Come on down, get your mother <laughs> on. Hey, you get two dollars off if you're in costume. So it'll um, snow furbles. It, it is a costume party too. It is a so. costume party. What are people? supposed to dress as anything you want really i mean it's movie themed so what's the date i'm sorry we, we've been very vague what is the date the date is going to be sunday the 25th at eight o'clock at mount Tabor theater in the lounge area. sunday the 25th 8 p.m mount Tabor theater which mm-hmm. is on hawthorne on hawthorne yes uh, across from the space room yes right by bar of the gods it's sad that it's I like like have all these locations down like that. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't do the same. I can't I'm tell you the streets. Gods. I can just tell you which bars it's. I near. think it's forty eighth. I think because um, it's forty eight eleven. I think is the address. I would say that would make it for it's yeah. it that it's at that weird area where it starts to kind of like I think you can't drive anymore. Whatever. Like where it's not. It's this not is not Hawthorne relevant. Shopping district this anymore. Is no it's no longer relevant. Mount Tabor Park. Exactly. Yes. Which is why it's probably Mount Tabor Pub. Okay. Yeah. So. This has been Google Maps Live with Cami Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday the 25th, 8 p.m. Yes. And there's a reason that Bobby's with us. Because he's hilarious. And uh, he's, no, yeah, I'm going to be I'm gonna be helping a comment this time. And yes. this, this is going to be interesting. Who's our who's our third commentatee this time? Uh, that would be Ezra. I think his last name is pronounced Karef. Karef? I never Karef? know how to pronounce it. Karef. Uh, he's the music editor of The Mercury. Uh, he's a very amusing fellow. He's a very funny guy. Um, yeah. I've never actually met him. But I saw um, a videotape, not a videotape, uh, a Vimeo footage of him at uh, at Backfence PDX, Melissa Lyons thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was telling a story. I, I, I think it involved, like, raining syringes <laughs> and, and midnight crackheads or something. <laughs> but the way, he was, the way he was telling the story was so involving, and you could tell the wit was just... Mile a minute, flying. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm I'm a little intimidated just to be sitting there because we're be, we're going to be watching a flaming pile of crap is what we're going to be watching. But there's going to be so many uh, opportunities for him to just tee off at a million miles a minute. So I'm I'm just basically going to be eyeing for any holes in the conversation. What you need can, to work on, yeah, is it, figure out which side of him you're going to be on, mm-hmm. and then just smack down the microphone <laughs> if he's talking, and then that way you can get a word in edgeways. I'll be on oh, the yeah. other side, so it'll even it out, like his wit and my. So you're like, suggesting I do it like a uh, old old little brother video game style, where if they start to get yeah. one up on me with player yeah. two, I just smack yeah, look, the control I out have of a, I have a brother. I yeah. have a brother, and I grew up in Texas. So yeah. between those uh, two things, I've learned to hit. Okay. That's, <laughs> You don't have to hit him, just the microphone. You're getting okay. too funny. <laughs> <laughs> know your it's my place. turn now. It's my turn. Yeah, so it's no, my show. It, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, what Ezra does to this film. I'll try and lob a couple yes, uh, decent little one liners <laughs> at the thing. And re- really, um, at the Master of the Universe one, what I discovered was that it wasn't so much the people up front. We were sort of like guiding the crowd towards where the punchlines were, mm-hmm. and the crowd themselves were coming with all of the best one liners. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I believe Allison from the Portland Mercury, she was at that as well, <laughs> and she was just. Seriously, like snipers, bang, just killing the jokes. For, she and, fell and then she fell asleep. <laughs> so, like, 45 minutes in, she was yeah. pretty damn hilarious. And then it was. Uh, which was which also you know, sort of you funny. can't really blame her, you know. For, you yeah, know. well, it was late. The first one was later. Um, it was like at 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. And 10 p.m. on a Sunday versus Mad Men. Um, the the audience was not as big as we would have liked it. But I didn't really get a choice for the time. Was, yeah, true. Was, so I mean, uh, you know, it, they're nice learning experiences, and so now we've got mm-hmm. this one, mm-hmm. uh, and it's at 8 p.m. on a Sunday, and we've got Ezra there, and it's at the Mount Tabor Theater, and it should be a much more calm, chilled out sort of atmosphere. People aren't. And so, there's a bar right there in the back. And there's, and there's a bar yes. in the back, so mm-hmm. yeah. And pizza. And, and really pizza. I yeah. didn't know that. Okay. They cool. have food. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, so that'll be cool. And uh, you know, you you and Eric were really sharp uh, when you were watching the Master of the Universe because you guys actually picked on some up on something that I didn't even see that exit sign. Yeah, there's a part in the movie in Master of the Universe where there's an exit sign on the outside of the building, kind of like by the door. So I just want to, in case anyone's <laughs> not familiar, by Masters of the Universe, they're talking about He-Man. Yeah, yeah. He-Man. Okay. He-Man movie. Yeah. I just want to make that 
abundantly clear. We're <laughs> talking no about Orko He-Man. And, and no Battle Cat, because apparently Battle Cat was also too much of a budgetary constraint. They don't even try to bring no, no, no. in analog was for it like, Cat. Was it like the rights to it, or just no, the rights? Yeah, they oh, because I remember yeah. when they made the tick into a live action, and they had the tick and Arthur, and they had the rights to that, but mm-hmm. they didn't have the rights to the other characters. That was with the guy from Seinfeld, right? The guy who plays like uh, Lane's boyfriend in Seinfeld? Yes, Patrick yeah. Warburton. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes, Patrick Warburton was the tick. Yes. And then I was just thinking about Batman well. He's pretty funny. For some reason, because Nestor Carbonell, mm-hmm. really funny. In I Lost. Mm-hmm. Amazing eyelashes. <laughs> Nestor Is Carbonell. He in He's in Lost. He's amazing he, eyelashes. He was, yes. yes. No, I was thinking of him from... God, never what, watched what, Lost. He was in either. something else that I, I really enjoyed. Will. I want to say that I never watched it, but I got <laughs> really sick with a 102 degree fever, and I had nothing else to do. Mm-hmm. And so you so watched, Lost? watched Lost? Lost. It probably made more sense that way. I think it did. Yes. Yeah, because there was some trippy... I'm not even going to get into it, but... There's a creepy looking guy with really nice. Eyelashes. I'm not gonna get into it either, but it's gonna be <laughs> really difficult creepy. for me. He's pretty. To... <laughs> He's pretty. <laughs> After Battlestar, it's gonna be really tough for me to get into another really long serialized I never watched, show like that. I tried to watch Battlestar oh, it, Galactica, but it, it was, was too involved. It for was me. so good at first, and then I, everybody, st- a lot of people still like it uh, how it turned out, but I didn't. I hated it. I hated the end. I hated it. I watched and the I'm first. Say it. I watched the first little mini series, mm-hmm. and then I watched a couple episodes here and there. It, the, the ending was just absurd i thought i didn't see absurd. the ending it was, it was so yeah i mean I, I i you can tell everyone i'm just telling if you if you haven't seen it close your ears. people will hate me they will hate me well no, i'm not going to tell them how it ends you have no, to tell me later it, you'll it, have to tell me later it's just awful let's just say that just... so we're doing the thing I yeah. have to ask if there's a strategy behind. Have you seen the movie that you're going no, to be No, I have. We, we did have a strategy for Masters of the Universe. We had mm-hmm. like a spotting session mm-hmm. where we we sat through and we watched the movie uh, all the way through once before, and we took notes mm-hmm. um, to make sure where the jokes. But you took notes. You're yeah. more studious. Yeah, like, I, 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 like, I, I took notes, and then um, I realized halfway through when we were actually there that most of these notes weren't going to apply to anything because <laughs> the jokes were just cascading down. Mm-hmm. And I seriously, like about 20 minutes in, I was just like. I we'll just roll with this. We'll just ride this train until the wheels fall off. But I was impressed that you were up. taking notes. I was yeah. like, this so really this good. one, I don't know if there's going to be uh, so much of a spotting session because I remember you you sent an email to, uh, yeah. to me and Ezra. Ezra is he's very busy, so I don't know if he's going to make it. I, I would like to have, uh, maybe we could turn it into like a little party or something, get a few yeah. people over. And well, that and you were also uh, expressing uh, a small amount of... I don't know, remorse that you were asking us to watch this piece of crap twice. <laughs> That's, it's difficult. Um... You know, I could watch it. I don't know. I could watch it about twenty or thirty times. Jesus. I love it. I, 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 I do. I mean, this this CGI that looks like it came from a video game cutscene in nineteen ninety four, coupled with like fire on it, and uh, okay, the the premise of Despiser. Let's just uh, get that out of the way. Despiser. Is, uh, <laughs> the Despiser. This this uh, gentleman who is an artist. Uh, he gets fired. He, he his wife leaves him. He but gets kicked blood. out of his apartment, yeah. mm-hmm. and then he. <laughs> goes driving and it's not really clear whether he was drinking before he was driving because his buddy was inviting him for beers before that and then okay. you see him just driving like and then like a, you had your tongue out like like a dog out the window <laughs> okay because that's what this movie makes me feel like so he, he <laughs> he's driving down this overpass and just kind of these little girls are on the overpass for no reason and he just kind of like skids out of the, out of the way and just goes in the water and dies but he doesn't really die he's just kind of in a coma it's beetlejuice he goes to purgatory which is a 1994 cgi with fires and uh fights uh aliens that uh, fires is in not, purgatory? that is not beetlejuice yeah, but just purgatory a little bit of fire. is not hell and uh but there's just, is, that's why there's a little fire and uh, this is a bad movie the characters the main characters drive around in a ford tourist a cgi ford like, tourist it's purgatory because it's a little fire it's a tiny fire like that's keep... their vehicle it's 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 uh that's their Batmobile is a Ford Taurus and yeah a Jesus Christ. Ford Taurus what color is the Taurus yeah I think it's black I don't know why I needed to know that. <laughs> yeah I was just like oh, what color my parents used to have a red Ford Taurus maybe I was thinking it was my bank parents old Ford Taurus that they were driving around in purgatory you're looking for any in into this movie any any way <laughs> this really could I'm trying to like, relate yeah I can't it is, uh, don't it is relate like to nothing you've it. ever seen that's the <laughs> thing and it's very difficult to relate to and then. And I'm not going to spoil it too much, but just when you think that it couldn't get any more ridiculous with uh-huh. the plot, it just throws like a curveball at you. And just because it's kind of like when there's a, it's kind of like an M Night Shyamalan movie, except for you know, it's, it's just like Whoa, this all. is really this is you thought this was like crazy and stupid. Well, no, it's like a million times stupider than you thought. And what are the criteria uh, that you look at when choosing a movie for the Seventh Planet Picture Show? 
pretty much I will just watch it and try to imagine, can I say anything about this movie? Is it going to be interesting to watch? Uh, because there are a lot of bad movies. Because the Spicer does have something that makes it special. Makes it it's endearing. It's not just your average, you know, you can put on a ton of, uh, you could watch Multiplicity you know, and, and which one was that? The just, one with uh, Keaton, and yeah, it was a lot of him. Yes, it, and you could. He watch kept trying to shave his tongue. That's, <laughs> that's the one gag that everyone really remembers from Multiplicity. I didn't watch the whole you thing. You could probably it watch that good. a million times and try to make some funny jokes about it. it. Might be fun, but I don't. It just I don't think it would be fun. So it, it's usually comedies are not that great for it. No, it has um, to be something that's serious. What about a Something cult classic? Something that tries to be serious. What about Army of Darkness? Or is that like too making fun of itself? Well, one of the things that I'm trying to uh, do with calling it the Seven Planet Fixture Show in instead of It's a Terrible Movie, which is what I was uh, calling it before, mm -hmm. is I don't want this idea of setting out with saying, oh, the movie is completely awful. Mm -hmm. I don't want to necessarily have it be just a complete bag fest on the movie where it's just like, oh, we're going to completely make fun of this movie. That's all we're doing. I think I want it to be kind of like a celebration, too. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm calling it Seventh Planet Picture Show um, as opposed to It's a Terrible Movie. So it's like a, you can you can go and I could actually even put in a good movie sometime, but it would have to be campy and cheesy. Yeah. But as long as it's something that you can sit there and think of things to say about it and you could enjoy riffing on it and talking about it and talking to it, yelling at it with your friends, then it works. Are you going to do a Christmas edition? I am going to do one to... a few days after Christmas, but I'm not sure if I'm going to make it Christmas themed. I was thinking about for, for November, I was thinking about doing a Thanksgiving one because it's Thanksgiving weekend. Mm -hmm. But I just decided, you know, it's going to be Sunday. Everybody's going to be sick of Thanksgiving. Do, is, are I there Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving movies? There is a really bad movie that I was thinking about using called Alice's Restaurant. Uh, you can get it. I'm not going to sing. Yes. Yeah. Wait, you mean by Scorsese? Uh, it, it's a terrible Alice's movie. <laughs> really? <laughs> you like that movie? Well, yeah. Hit me. yeah <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> See, this is, that's why I didn't ask you to do that one. <laughs> but I know I. You've I, been shunned I, for I your bad days. Like, hey, you guys, shut up! <laughs> Scorsese directed this. Hey, you know, just, just, I mean, just because he's done some great things doesn't mean that he. I can't like do Alice's something. Restaurant. Brought the world. Chris Christopherson is a serious. Okay, I almost said. Oh, they took a they took a twenty minute song and I'm made sorry. it into a movie, and then just like added a bunch of tried to add a bunch of serious drama over this ridiculous song. Actually, about I, a guy. I remember. I think that was the uh, the movie where Martin Dunking Scorsese um, <laughs> discovered his love affair with the uh, the still frame. Because I think there's about fifteen different transitions in that movie where like everything goes to oh. orange and just stops uh, I, for ten maybe. seconds, and then it fades up slowly. And Arlo oh, Guthrie, Ellen Burst I just want to sad. punch Arlo Guthrie in the face. Like, dude, my dad is like weeping movie, right I... now. My dad is weeping <laughs> every year at Thanksgiving. My dad makes me listen to Alice's Restaurant, <laughs> the song, not the movie. And and if you're gonna insult Guthrie, my dad is just oh, oh. he's gonna be sobbing into his martini. Just, I like his blog too. This is why I, I don't like watch his your show. I don't, don't want to make him cry. No, he won't cry. He'll probably no. try to kill me. He won't cry. He probably thinks the movie's crap. Well, but he loves the song, so I don't know. I've never seen the movie. I'd like to see. He should write a blog post about it. I'd like to see what he says on his. Blog. He wrote it. I think he wrote a blog post about the song once. Did he? I'll have, okay. to, I'll have to look. I have no problem with the song. <laughs> Doctor Normal's laughing. What? Because we're talking about my dad. You can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant, restaurant excluding you. Alice. <laughs> That's but in the movie he does get her though. Oh. Damn. Oh, bam. You break the basic premise of the song. It's the one thing you can't have. <laughs> right? All right, so then, okay, quick question then. Yeah. Which you, obviously, you think uh, Alice's Restaurant is a bad movie. Yes. Do you like Alice the TV show? Uh, Alice the TV what show? Is Alice you don't the remember? TV show? Oh, my god. I don't watch TV. You have to know this about me. I, I mean, I, I have watched Alice, TV Alice here was there, a TV show based on Alice's Restaurant. Oh, Alice, oh, the, my Alice god. the Diner Show. Yeah. Okay. With, yeah, with Mel. Vic Tabak. I, I was thinking Kiss My Grits. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, oh, yeah. I was thinking Alice. <laughs> Kiss I was my grits thinking like Alice in Wonderland. And no. I was like. Did you like that show? I, Did you watch I it? barely remember it. I, I remember Did you Kiss watch My Grits. After Mash? No, I never. The spin -off, no, the spin -off no. Of Bash Actually, that that, that, that would be a good idea. That would be a good idea. They did that. For, no, no, for uh, oh, for, for Seven the Seven Planet, Planet do yeah. show yeah. like TV some show? real, yeah, really I bad spin-offs. I thought about maybe doing some TV shows, or if the movie's not long enough, like they Joni loves CPK, Chachi. That's exactly what I was thinking Chachi. of. The mind link right there. Yes, Joni loves Chachi. Yeah, that's a bad idea. You need to consider this. Because bad TV. What is it? There's nothing like bad TV. Oh, what is it? Pink Lady and Jeff. You showed that show. No, yeah. what is that? I've never heard of that. I don't that. know what that is. 
this is a, see, this but is, you're this killing is a the doctor. Right I'm sorry. We're Apologize. gonna have to call the doctor for the doctor because he's just not breathing anymore. Apparently, Pink. Wait, Pink. Pink Lady and Jeff. Pink Lady and Jeff. I can't remember the name of the actor, but um, he was a terrible comedian. He was on like Solid Gold a lot, if I remember correctly. No, oh, nothing no. good comes. <laughs> so from episodes Solid of Solid Gold. Gold would work, as a matter of fact. <gasps> the hey, Gold maybe Show. Some Soul Train yeah. or something. Yeah. What? Oh no, you can't. No, that just had yeah. people dancing. You can't mock. That's Soul like Train, the really. Apple. That's why I won't do the Apple. What was that uh, thing with Tara Ed Dublin McMahon? Wanted me to do the Apple. And uh, oh, Star Search. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, Star Search. Doctor Normal has something to say, everyone. I, I just want to say something. You didn't insult um, Martin Scorsese. You insulted the great director Arthur Penn. Oh, it was Arthur Penn. Arthur Penn. Oh, okay. all right, all right. According to IMDb, well, I was which is about, on the screen. Well, I was right talking now. about Martin Scorsese. I don't know who this Scorsese guy is. <laughs> this is Arthur Penn. <laughs> <laughs> Why was I think? No, I was thinking Alice doesn't live here anymore. All right, so that's why. Okay. Thank you for the correction. Thank you for the correction, Dr. Maybe, maybe you could... You okay, all right. That's have you seen that, Alice's restaurant? Maybe I haven't seen it, because I think I was confusing it with Alice doesn't live here anymore. Is there is there like this like, skinny you, little hippie kid walking around the whole time? Did you see the orange screens that he was talking about? Yeah, no, no, no. The, no, the orange screens I don't think are in the movie. Okay, so we were talking... Okay, okay, there we go. Okay. It's a good thing we're going to be commenting on movies oh, for people's entertainment, because that worked really well, what just happened. Have you ever seen? Have you heard of movies called Santos, uh, the Mexican uh, wrestler movies? No. no. There is okay. See, uh, to change the subject, uh, really uh, non sequitur, but uh, there are a series of uh, movies <laughs> featuring a Mexican wrestler. I was just watching one of them tonight. Uh, who's apparently he? They did like forty or fifty. This of is them. how you prepare for my show. You you this, watch a Mexican wrestler movie. Yes. <laughs> nice. Because this nice, well. movie will probably be featured on uh, Seventh Planet Picture Show at some point. Mm-hmm. There is a Mexican wrestler, and his name was Santos, and he was like a Mexican wrestler for like thirty or forty with years. With the mask the and luchador, everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. with the he had a silver mask. He was also called the Man in the Silver Mask, and. Uh, they made movies with him where he's kind of like a superhero, and he just wrestles like monsters and criminals and what have you and they just kept getting more and more ridiculous because they just kept pumping them out like no budget just like boom you know here they are oh and like saw like, movies kind of like that okay. yeah um, i've never seen but any the saw of movies are probably worse so um <laughs> i think i would rather watch 20 santos movies than watch a uh, one saw movie because those movies just hurt this outside. is completely unrelated did you know they used to make a cartoon for children they were about like little child luchadors called mucha lucha or something oh, yeah. like that that sounds awesome yeah. i remember that i remember my that daughter show. Watched it obsessively. That was okay. a good show. It was yeah. a legitimately good show. No, it was just they, crazy. They, cool. they tried to that pay attention made, to the scripts. Yeah, for a it was just there. like yeah. crazy that they made this show with like little mini luchadors. The flea. I love the. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I'm sorry. I want to know if you're going to do if the one after Christmas is going to be a Christmas movie. Oh, is that what we were talking about? Yes, that's. I don't know okay. how we got. Oh, because Thanksgiving. Because you were asking about Thanksgiving, and you were like, "Were there any Thanksgiving movies?" And I was like, yeah. "I don't know anything about film, but I'm going to talk like I know what I'm talking about." And, and then I have ADD. Up, yeah, and then yeah. we ended up so, with the Luchador. It's okay. So. Okay, Luchador's so which is, Christmas. which is why I do this, you know, the movie thing. So, um, the Christmas thing. Um, I I don't know. Like I said, with the Thanksgiving, I, I'm, tr- I'm people might be wanting to get away from that. They might be looking for an escape from that. So I'm not necessarily sure if I want to make my movies holiday themed, but I will have one right after Christmas and right before New Year's. See, I would is, think that right after week. Christmas is when people would be most likely to want to say horrible things about it. That's that's not a bad idea. That's also that's the when week my of Christmas my Christmas ire is like, like at its like. Very peak. I want I want something good because I'm I think I'm gonna make it my thirtieth birthday party because I don't want to have a party on my thirtieth birthday because that's on the thirtieth. Mm-hmm. So New Year's Eve is the next day, so nobody yeah. wants to go out and get crazy. So yeah. I you and Doctor Normal like, yeah. both poor sad souls with holiday birthdays. It's... But if I did do a Christmas movie, Jingle All the Way would probably be a good one. <gasps> Ooh. Uh, is that the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yes, yes. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad. And he's trying to get the toy. I've never seen it. <laughs> I've never seen it. I avoid bad movies like the Isn't plague. There a part where, there's a part where Sinbad calls it a bomb threat or something. Yeah, Phil kind of... Hartman is also in it. Oh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. He's, he's, and Jake yes. Lloyd, who played uh, Anakin Skywalker in episode uh, one. He is he is Arnold Schwarzenegger's kid. We don't talk about the first mm-hmm. three I'm, I'm, episodes. But, but there, there's fodder there for, there is for fodder. smart ass remarks. I, I, I heard someone I say they that. actually liked those as long, uh, last, uh, week, uh, last week. As long as you say bad things about it, I guess it's okay to talk about said he liked the... Yeah. Robert Wagner. Yeah, w- Wagner said he liked the first one. He said he liked the first one. Uh, I think the third one's better okay, than Return of the Jedi, but I get I get a lot of crap for that. Yeah, you said that too. I 
I don't. Okay. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, there is one redeeming quality in across all three of those movies, yeah. and it's the same redeeming quality in all three of those movies. Are you going to say Ewan McGregor? Yes. Oh. Yeah, see? It <laughs> yes, is. Ewan McGregor is all right. I, I, I like. It. I like Ewan McGregor. I will. I will say that's cool. Yeah. Uh, All right. He does a good job. He does Sound a good job with the Alan Choose life. Get a job. No, Dr. <laughs> Normal. It's not the same thing. It's oh. a great big television. Wasn't that you and <laughs> it's a great big view. I think because it's they, the same actor doesn't with, uh, mean it's the same thing. With, with uh, episode two when they were Wasn't coming Obi-Wan out, he was making fun heroin? of the title. Dr. Normal, Wasn't these shoes the don't come off as easily, but if I have to throw it at you, I will. I didn't cue the sound effect this week. Then don't make me throw a shoe at you. What is it, like a... It's like a broken glass window okay. thing. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I don't really show throw shoes at my husband. I know. I just I pretend know. Well, I've to. never seen it. What's I your know. favorite uh, Ewan McGregor movie? If you can pick one off the top of your head. Because hmm. I know they're showing... Uh, what is it? Moulin Rouge? Is that tomorrow? No, that's at the not Theater? it at all. At you don't, you don't I like don't, the Moulin Rouge? No, I don't You don't enjoy like him it. getting his uh, Elton John on? No. Getting like, all toothy. He's very toothy in that movie. I like no. Down with Love, actually. I a don't. Lot. <laughs> it makes me, they make me sound a little bit. Uh, the one with Renee a little Zellweger. Bust, uh, a little bit fabulous, but yeah. Yeah, I, no. I like that. It's that's it's too much of a chick flick for me. Okay. I'm not a chick flick individual. So is it, is it train spotting then? I really do yes. enjoy train spotting. If, if it's you hard took to beat. the fight scene in episode two with him and. Um, What's the guy? And, There's something and, else I like and, him in the Yeah, Boba Fett. No, what the hell? Django Fett. Fett. Django Fett. Yeah. Take thing that I fight like scene, in. put it in train spotting, perfect movie. Done. <laughs> I like the idea of Renton that, just getting in a fight is, with a Fett. That is fantastic. That movie. I was looking to the audience. I'm having a hard time. I really do like him in train spotting, but there is another yeah. movie he did that I really liked, and I can't remember what it is right Big now. A Life Less Ordinary? Big Fish? Yeah, that's it. Big a Fish. Movie. Thank you. Hmm. God, I don't think Dr. Normal liked that movie, but I loved that movie. All right. I was in a movie called Big Fish. That's my that was my Ewan McGregor impression. You like that? That was that was worse than Doctor Normal's impression, <laughs> and that's saying something. Yeah. Uh, and on that note, Big Fish. We need to we need to go through the. <laughs> where can we find you, Will? Um, I am on Twitter at uh, twitter dot com forward slash Will Raddick uh, in your water dot wordpress dot com seven. Seventh Planet Picture Show has a kind of crappy blog that I've set up at uh, 7pps.wordpress.com, but I, you know, don't, don't, have, any high, don't have any high expectations. Uh, <laughs> just go there for basic information. But I will be putting a lot of stuff on there, I mean, because it's not going to be just a uh, live show. It's also going to be a web show. I'm going to be recording people uh, watching the movies, like especially public domain movies and stuff like that, and putting them up there as podcasts, as video podcasts. That is podcast. fantastic. And uh, I might also be doing uh, uh, reviews and like short uh, commentaries, like doing uh, stuff with shorts and things like that. So it's going to be pretty interesting. It's going to be more than a live show, but at this point... It's uh, just a live show because I'm working on the other stuff. But that that stuff will probably be out like within the next couple of weeks. You'll and what about your podcast? Uh, my podcast is Erraticast, but it hasn't been up for a while. No, it hasn't. Uh, we kind of miss Erraticast. I've been meaning to get back to it. It's just a thing of every once in a while, I'm like, oh, I could d- do a podcast. I've got all my setup now setup which i hadn't had before which is kind of like that's the thing i I do these things very impulsively so i Mm -hmm. get the idea oh i kind of want to record a podcast and i'll just go do it like i could never really hack what uh what uh robert here does uh with his show because he has to be on there every day like on like bam Mm -hmm. you know i would i would be like well i'm gonna talk about today (laughs) but when i when i when i'm like even doing the daily show (laughs) to play off of though and (laughs) and where can we find you uh at court and fatboy.com that's where you go ahead and get the uh the podcast of the show um I mean, you can hear us live uh, Monday through Friday, three to seven on KUFO. But there's uh, music interrupting our uh, our ass hattery. Yes, yeah, I wouldn't brilliance. go so far as to call it brilliance, uh, mediocre garbage. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you go to courtandfatboy.com, uh, you can download it. It's about like sixty to eighty minutes uh, compressed. Uh, so all the little talk breaks plus extra stuff that we do, um, because we we realize that uh, while radio is cool for paying us and letting us do what we do, um, at at this point, if things don't change radio is basically going to be nothing but an extended commercial for Mm -hmm. what you're going to get online um we're pretty much one of the only shows i think we might be the only show in portland i don't think i've uh, found another that releases it that that, that actually does extra stuff which solely to for say, the listeners. Uh, it's the only Portland radio show I listen to because it's the only one that I can use well, podcast. Thank you very much. So yeah, so courtandfatboy.com is where you can find it. And um, I also I uh, write uh, movie reviews and uh, I contribute to crack.com. Uh, and you that should read website. his latest post at Cracked 
I think Dr. Normal will put the uh, URL up for you because... Yeah. Oh. It's called five uh, five reasons why it sucks to be a Joss Whedon. Fan. <laughs> it was beautiful. Well, I, I'm a Joss Whedon fan, so it's it's intended to be gentle ribbing. It's not intended to be a, a full on <laughs> flaming arrow directly into Whedon's giant. How dare giant. you? How dare you? I think we're gonna continue this on into <laughs> okay, after hours. Right, so. <laughs> Let's say good night to the people who are leaving us. Uh, please join us next week. We'll have Curtis Chen on the show. Thank you.